Thank you for choosing to watch another free e-learning tutorial from dacanane.com. Today we shall continue with our focus on Android apps, and KineMaster in particular. This app is probably the best video editing tool in the Android ecosystem, and so it should be on everyone's BYOD list. Today we will take you through all the skills you need to know in order to master the features of this essential Android tool, and help you to produce your own stunning videos direct from your tablet. So, let's get right into it. When I open the lens themed layout of the KineMaster app, I am welcomed with a big friendly Start Here doodle. Obviously, I do as it suggests and press the indicated button. The next screen suggests that I follow the new user three step process. I'm going to ignore that and jump right into the interface by pressing the Skip option. This is the KineMaster interface. Let's take a look around. The screen is split into three. Along the bottom is the timeline where my eventual video will be created. The top left hand side of the screen is where my each media clip will appear and to the right is the control interface. Let's take a closer look at the tools immediately available to us on the control wheel. The top quadrant of the wheel is where I can browse to the media I want to import, meaning videos and images. Moving clockwise I can use the next button to browse for audio tracks to add to my movie. The next button is the Themes button, and finally the Record button is self-explanatory. Using this button I can capture images, video and audio directly within the app. I have already captured some footage to use for this tutorial, so I'm going to press the Add Media option. When I do, KineMaster presents me with all the folders on my tablet that have the appropriate media in it for me to choose from. I'm going to look at the contents of my camera folder. Once in the camera folder, I can see all the images and videos taken using the camera app. The icon in the bottom left of each image lets me know whether the content is a still image or a video clip. In the top right of the screen, I can just select images or video if I need to filter the content. To select the media I want for my video, I simply press on each one and as I do, KineMaster adds them to the shelf at the bottom of the page. When I am happy with my selection, I press on the large tick to the right of the shelf. KineMaster now jumps back to the timeline view. Now we can start to edit our movie. The first thing you'll notice is that the videos have been put on the timeline in the order that I clicked them and there is also a background music clip added to my movie. To get more of a storyboard view of the timeline, all I have to do is to use the pinch action and bring my thumb and forefinger together. This allows me to see the entire video as a series of clips. And now I can move the clips into the sequence I want for my movie. To see the content of each clip, I simply move the timeline left or right until the clip I want to inspect is under the playhead. To move a clip or delete it, I press and hold on the clip. In the viewer, a trash can icon appears. To remove the clip from the timeline, I simply move the clip to the icon and let go. Note that the clip is only removed from the timeline and the project, but is not deleted from my device. But I do not want to do this, I want to move things around. I'm going to make this clip my opening clip. I repeat this process until I have the clips in the sequence that I want them. Once I am happy with my sequence, it is time to actually edit the individual clips. Now I can use the stretch action on the timeline with my thumb and forefinger and zoom into the timeline so that I can edit each clip individually. To start editing a clip, all I have to do is press on it and it becomes highlighted with an orange border and a new menu appears. Let's have a look at what each of the menu options offer to us. Starting at the left of the new toolbar, the video icon is highlighted by default. With this tool I am able to reflect my clip on the vertical axis, or using the rotate tools I can turn a portrait oriented movie into a landscape playable clip. Moving to the right, the audio tool allows me to set the volume levels for the clip and for the background music. Moving again to the right, the special effects tool has three text tools for titles and overlays. Next comes the trimming tool, identified by the scissors. This is where I expect I'll be spending most of my editing time. The three circles are the colorization tools. This is probably a tool I would use sparingly, but for some, this is probably an essential tool. The levels tool allows me to make changes to the brightness and the contrast and the saturation of each clip. Moving to the right again, the speed dial allows me to speed up or slow down a clip. The next tool is a screen capture tool that will allow me to capture a particular frame from a clip and use it as a still image, a particularly useful tool. The final tool is the audio envelope tool and this would allow me to reduce or amplify parts of an audio track on any given clip. 
Finally, to the left and right pointing arrows, and these will allow me to undo or redo my edits quickly. Those are the tool sets that I have to play with, so now let's get editing. I think it is essential to state at this point that workflow is an entirely personal thing. What works for you is just fine. Generally, once I have sorted out my clip sequence, I like to edit the clips using the scissor tool, and so that is where I will begin. To edit a clip, first I ensure that it is selected, and then I press on the scissor tool. On the clip are two large buttons that I can slide from left to right to trim either the start or the end of a track. To make this more accurate, I simply zoom into the clip using the stretch gesture. At the start of this clip, my preferred start point is at the bottom of the windscreen, so I want to remove the first bit by using this method. Sometimes I like to split a clip. This is a particularly useful trick for titles, which we'll get into in a moment. To split a track, I simply place the playhead at the exact point on the timeline where I want the track to be divided into two sections. I then press the split at playhead option to the right. Note how when I do this, there is no clip transition inserted between the clips. The effect here is that my viewers will not see the split. The two clips will play seamlessly as one, allowing me to add a title to one of the split clips. Looking at the other options here, the trim features will delete the portion of the clip to the left or the right of the playhead, depending on which one I choose. However, for this movie, I want to grab a particular frame and use that for the starting title sequence. So I'm going to come out of the scissor tool and open the screenshot tool. I want to use the middle option here and create a new static image that will be inserted into the timeline to the right of the current clip. Now that has been done, I can move the image to the start of the timeline and then edit it. By default, still images have Ken Burns zoom effects on them. I do not like this effect personally, but they do have their uses. To remove the zooming effect, I select the second tool from the left, and to the right of the preview screen I can see the start and end points of my clip. To remove the zoom, ensure the start position and the end position of the clip are in the same place. Getting this right can be a bit fiddly, but the effort is worth it in my opinion. By default, a still image will play for 6 seconds. To lengthen or shorten that time, I use the scissor tool to stretch or shrink the clip. Now that I have my starting still image, I will add a title to this clip. To start this process, I press on the FX tool. I strongly recommend that you spend some time in here looking at all the options available to you. I will just illustrate a couple. The stickers are fun, and the handwriting tool would be great if I had a stylus and neat handwriting. Sadly, I lack both. For this clip, I'm going to use the middle theme option in the top section of the title tool. Once the tool is pressed, the tool options open to the right. By clicking on each of the radio buttons, it is possible to set the text color and the color of the background by using the color pickers that appear. To create the title, I press on the white bar above the radio buttons. Now the keyboard appears and I can type the text for my title. By clicking on the letter A to the right, I can change the font. By default, the droid fonts are used, which are very limited. But if I click on the Latin option to the left, I have access to many more fonts. To use any font, all I have to do is to click on the green download button to the left, and that font will be used in my title. To get back to the keyboard, I press the return button, and then set the text in the title. I press OK, and my title is now set. To preview my movie at any time, all I have to do is to click on the play icon in the preview screen. Now that I've edited my clip, I can look at some of the other tools available to me. Let's have a look at the colour filter. By pressing on the three circles, it is possible for me to colourise my clips. Colourising is a good way of setting a mood for a movie. Think of the slightly green hue of the Matrix movies, etc. Used well, colourise can have a very positive impact on a movie. To add colour, just click on one of the colour buttons to the right. To return a clip back to how it was, use the top left hand filter. Perhaps a more useful tool for most users is the Levels tool. Using this tool it is possible to alter the exposure using the Brightness and Contrast tools to give the clip a boost it needs. The Saturation slider saturates or desaturates the colours of the entire clip. Using these tools can give real depth, warmth and vibrancy to my clips. Finally for this section, the Play Speed tool needs no introduction, but can produce some really great visual effects if combined with the split clips. Remember how I said a split clip plays seamlessly? If I had some clips of fast moving action, I could split the clip 
and slow down one of the clips to overemphasize the action. So now I've gone through all the visual tools, it is now time to look at the audio tools and the options available to me to further enhance my movie. Selecting a clip, I can press on the audio icon. I can make global changes here to the audio in this clip with the two sliders. I can increase the volume of the entire audio clip and adjust the audio of the backing track or mute it altogether. As I said, these are global edits, but we can do more. With my clip still selected, I press once again on the scissors tool. The bottom option on the right allows me to extract the audio of the entire clip. What this action allows me to do is to either delete the entire audio from the clip or to use the envelope tool to boost the audio of key parts of the clip. To manipulate the audio with the envelope tool, I have to ensure that the audio track and not the video clip has been selected. A new audio menu appears. I now press on the envelope tool. This tool allows me to add key frames to the audio track. To add a keyframe, all I have to do is to move the clip backwards and forwards until the section of the audio track that I want to amplify is under the playhead. I then press the add button. To add more keyframes, I repeat the process. Now that I've added the keyframes, all I have to do to amplify the audio is to move the track so that the keyframe is under the playhead again and then use the slider to the right to increase or decrease the volume. Again, I can repeat this for each keyframe. Using this technique is a good way to try to reduce excessive background sounds if a track has them. The audio on my video clips do not have any commentary. Therefore, I want to add a voiceover track. To do this, I need to ensure that no clips are selected so that the navigation wheel returns. Now I can click on the record button. The menu that appears has three options and I will select the audio option. When I'm ready to speak, I just press the start button and the recording starts immediately. And as KineMaster records my voice, it also plays the clip in the viewer and creates a red overlay on the timeline to illustrate how much time I have left in a clip. To stop recording, I press the stop button. This next menu gives me four choices. Accept, discard, review and retake. If I review my recording, it'll be played back to me. If I accept my recording, it'll be put in the timeline. The other two options mean redo. I will accept my recording. It is now put in the timeline below the clip. By selecting this audio clip, I have the option to trim either end of the audio track with the sliders, just like a video track. I can also use the envelope tool should I want to. The final audio element I want to add is my own music track. To add audio, I need to ensure that nothing is selected and the navigation wheel reappears. Now I press on the add audio option on the wheel. KineMaster opens up all the locations where audio tracks have been stored on my tablet and all I need to do now is to select the appropriate track. When I press on a track, two options appear, the play button and the plus button. I always preview the track prior to inserting it, so I press on the play button. Once I'm sure this is the music I want, I then press on the add button and KineMaster inserts the audio into the timeline for me. Once back in the timeline, Note how KineMaster identifies different audio sources with icons and different colours. Now that I have added audio to my video creation, there is really only one more thing to add to my video before I render it and it's ready for sharing. Between each clip that has not been split, KineMaster automatically inserts the default transition. To edit this, I just have to press on a transition icon and a new menu appears. I can now browse the transitions and select the transition I want. Once I press on it, that choice will be inserted between the clips. Just a note here, please be consistent in your choice of transition. The new toolbar with numbers on it indicates the length of the transition. The default is two seconds and this is highlighted. To change the duration of the transition, all I have to do is to press on the appropriate number. And that's it. My video has been edited and is ready for sharing. To do this, bizarrely, I have to close the app and reopen it. To name my project, all I have to do is to tap on the name, untitled below the video here, and the keyboard appears. I can now name my project, and when done, I click on the rename button to save the changes. To share my movie or to export it from KineMaster, I have to press on the share or export button in the bottom right of the screen here. When the new menu appears, I have the option to choose the quality of the final exported file. I always choose high definition, and then press on the export button. The next screen gives me a choice about the watermark. 
And as I do not want to subscribe, I have to put up with the watermark and have to press the larger export button. Depending on the size of the video, the rendering process can take some time. It is important at this stage that the app is not closed during this process. When the video has been rendered, KineMaster provides quick links to the share options available to me. To share via one of these links, all I have to do is to simply press on the appropriate icon. I have clicked on the YouTube option, and because I already have a YouTube account, and I am already logged into YouTube, my video is almost ready to upload. I just need to create a title and write a description for my YouTube video. I can also select the appropriate category and even add tags, all from within the app. Once I am happy with the information, I simply press on the upload button in the bottom right of the screen, and my video is on its way to YouTube. As part of the rendering process, KineMaster saves the exported video back into the video folder of my tablet. As you can see, KineMaster is a fully featured video editing tool and as such should be on every BYOD list. It really is a great tool, even with the watermark. Thanks for watching this free tutorial. Your support is important to us and we value your feedback. So please leave a comment below and also don't forget to like us. We aim to produce one tutorial per week, so why not subscribe? You won't regret it. So until our next tutorial hits your feeds, keep practicing.